Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. This is the time of the year when everybody feels especially cheerful and kind-hearted, isn't it? Certainly when we think of the great gift God gave us in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we should be happy and thankful. We think of Christmas as a time of miracles, don't we? The greatest miracle, of course, was the birth of Jesus. But the other miracles I'm talking about are the changes that take place in the hearts of men. The spirit of peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Just now, it's three weeks till Christmas, and there's a deep snow in Naughty Pine. In fact, many of the townspeople have hitched up their horses and sleighs and are out enjoying the brisk mountain air. Bill and the fellows are walking across town listening to the tinkling and jingling of sleigh bells. Boy, oh boy. You know, I wish I'd been living at the time of the first Christmas. I agree with you, pal. Imagine being out on the hillside tending sheep and... Suddenly a heavenly host of angels appear, singing praise and glory to God and the baby Jesus. Ah, what an experience that must have been. Uh, you say plenty of that time, Bill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. <laughs> I'd like to have been one of the wise men, the shepherds who saw the baby Jesus in the manger. In Surrey, that would have been something. Hey, here comes Dave Benson and Jimmy. Boy, there's a real example of how faith in the Lord can help you through trouble and testing. I'll say so. Hey, Dave, stop him. Oh, oh, boy. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Dave. Hi, Stumpy. Yeah. Bill. Howdy. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's good to see you, fellas. How are you? Fine, Dave. Yeah, sure. You're looking pretty chipper today, Jimmy. How are things? Just fine, Bill. Cy Withers let Dad borrow the horse and sleigh to take me out in. I like this fine. Jimmy doesn't get out very much in the winter time. This is such a beautiful day. I, well, I thought it might be one of the few days this winter that he could be out. How's old Dobbin doing at the other end of the sleigh, Jimmy boy? He's doing fine jobs, Stumpy. Someday I'll be able to pull my own sled. I know you will, young feller. Just keep your chin up and look into the Lord. He'll work something out for you, sure as you're a foot high. Uh, I know it, Stumpy. I never get discouraged. I'll say he doesn't. Jimmy has more faith and courage than any of us. Dave, have you made any arrangements to see a specialist? If you haven't, I know of one. Not yet, Bill. I'll drop over to see you later in the day. Well, I'll have to be leaving you. I'd better get Jimmy home. He's been out of his wheelchair quite a while. I'll be in the office, Dave. Come in any time. Oh, thanks, Bill. Come on, Dobbin, let's go. Hey, Jasper, hey, Mr. Dobbin, it's Gertrude. <laughs> That's Stumpy's fault, not mine. Stumpy, you and your pet name. <laughs> uh, Stumpy, you always get in trouble. Yeah, maybe I should have called him, I mean her, Dobbinette. Yeah, we should roll you in the snow for that one. Uh, you and whose army, Henry? Me, myself. That's... Hey, now he wants a snowball fight. <laughs> let's give it to him, Bill. Hey, I'm not helping me out. Take out one. If you don't, this will be Stumpy's last stand. Hello, fellas. Oh, hi, hi, Dave. Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Yeah, take the easy chair, Dave. <sighs> Thanks. Don't mind if I do. Um, about that specialist, Bill... Do you know one who might be able to help Jimmy? Yes, I do, Dave. Dr. Alex Weston. He's a good friend of mine. Ah, uh, he fine, doctor. He helped Jimmy. Oh, that's good news. When can I take my boy to see him, Bill? Perhaps it won't be necessary to take him, Dave. He makes frequent visits to this part of the country. Let me find out if he's coming through here soon. Okay. Oh, one thing, Bill. Uh, that is, well... Do you know if he's expensive? 
No, he's not, Dave. It's not that I wouldn't spend it on Jimmy. I'd sell my right arm to see him walk again. But I don't make a great deal, and you know how it is. No, you needn't explain any further. I understand, Dave. Dave, I've often wondered how you and Jimmy and Madge can keep smiling the way you do. I don't know if I could under the same circumstances. Oh, well, the Lord gives us strength, Henry. Madge and I believe that the Lord will work things out when it's his will that Jimmy should walk again. I guess I've got a lot to learn about trusting the Lord. Mm, it's good how Jimmy keeps bright and cheerful. It's not easy to sit in a wheelchair all his life. Honestly, Gray Wolf, you, you can't appreciate Jimmy's wonderful attitude about his handicap. If you could be with him all day, you'd find out. He never complains. Always on the cheerful side. He says that... that it's the way the Lord wants him to be. Sometimes Madge and I get discouraged, but Jimmy pulls us out of the gloom, believe me. Yeah, I can believe that, Dave. I've never seen him discouraged. If he ever does, we might as well give up. Huh? Let's not hear any talk about giving up. Hey, you see this here seed in my hand, Dave? Yes, I see it, old-timer. You know what kind of a seed it is? No, I can't say that I do. It's awfully small, isn't it? This here is a mustard seed, young feller. An old preacher friend gave it to me. You know, the Lord said if we had faith this big, we could go outside and tell those mountains out there just to move over. <laughs> Alex, this is Bill. Bill Jefferson, how are you? I haven't heard from you in six weeks. <laughs> is it that long, Alex? Honestly, time goes by like a jet plane. Say, uh, will you do me a favor, old boy? You know I will. What's up? I'd like you to take a look at a friend of mine. Sure, I'd be glad to. Who is he? Name's Jimmy Benson. He's ten years old and hasn't walked since he was two. Took a tumble down the basement stairs and hasn't walked since. I'm interested. Let's see, um, look, I'll be down first thing in the morning. When's the doctor coming, Mom? Tomorrow morning, Jimmy. Is he real good? Well, I don't know, Jimmy. Ask your dad. He knows more about it than I do. Well, all I know about him is what Bill told me, son. But let's keep trusting the Lord, shall we? Don't worry about a thing. Well, I'm not worried, Dad. I know the Lord loves me, and he wouldn't let anything happen to me that wasn't good for me. And that's why I never felt real bad, because I couldn't walk. Jesus knows why, and he's got some reason for it. Yes, Jimmy, the Lord's got some reason for it. I know he has. test another reflex, Jimmy. Just relax now for me. That's fine. Just that way now. Oh, oh. Doctor, please, you're hurting him. It didn't hurt much, Mom. Anyway, the hurt's gone now. I'm sorry you have to suffer pain, Jimmy. But I had to know just how badly your reflexes are damaged. That'll be all for now, at least. Thanks, Dr. Alex. You're a good lad, Jimmy. A real soldier. Here, shake hands. Will I walk again, Doctor? To be honest with you, Jimmy, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Well, folks, I must move on. We'll see you to the door. If you can help me, I'll be awfully glad. So long, Jimmy. Bye. What's your real opinion, Doctor? Yes, please tell us the truth. We can take it. Alex, Madge and Dave asked you the big question. What's the answer? I'm thinking how nice it would be if I had the power to heal like the apostles. I'd walk over to Jimmy, take his hand, and command him to walk. 
But the Lord hasn't given me that power. You mean, then, that there isn't any... any hope outside of a miracle from the Lord? I didn't say that. You mean that maybe... All I can say is I, I found certain symptoms that tell me that Jimmy's condition can be corrected. I wouldn't say more than that. Oh, that's wonderful. You mean he can walk and run like other children? That's what I'm hoping for. I, I'd like to have my diagnosis checked before I make a final statement. To find out, I... I want to send you to a specialist friend of mine in Baltimore. Will you go? Oh, sure, any time you say. Only... Yes, only what? Nothing, Doctor. Nothing at all. It'll have to be by plane. Uh, going by train or auto would be too hard on the boy. When do you want us to take him? In about uh, three days, Dave. Meantime, I'll make arrangements with this friend of mine. Thank oh, you, Doctor. Thanks so much, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye, Dave. Manager. Dave, how are we going to pay for a trip and for an examination? We haven't any money. I know, but see this? What? what looks like a seed, Dave. No, it's not just a seed, Madge. It's a mustard seed. Stumpy gave it to me, and the Lord Jesus said it would happen. You like Jimmy, don't you, Alex? How'd you know? I could see it in your face. Well, I know perfectly well what Dave meant. It's too bad they're so short of money. I'll set up the appointment all right. I, I hope they can make it. They'll make it all right. Huh? What do you mean? You don't buy plane tickets with your personality, you know. <laughs> no, I never have yet. But you set up the appointment with Dr. Fitzgerald anyway. And, Dr. Uh, Fitzgerald? How did you know I was talking about him? Elementary deduction, my dear Watson. He's the best orthopedic surgeon in the country. And Jimmy, you wouldn't recommend anybody but the best. <laughs> Jimmy, is Bill. he going to be all right? Bill, how is he? Fellas, yeah, how is he? please don't ask me to answer questions right now. I know you're very anxious to know, but I've got a deadline to meet. Fourth Street Church, Alvin Bender speaking. Uh, Bill Jefferson, Pastor. Oh, yes, Bill. How are you? Oh, fine, thanks. I just wanted to check with you. Is uh, tomorrow night the night for the joint meeting of the deacons and trustees? And that's right, Bill. And I'm expecting you here with the rest of them at 8 o'clock. And you can count on me, Pastor. I'll be there. It's our busy day. Ranger headquarters, Henry Scott speaking. Henry, is Bill there? Oh, sure. Just a minute. Bill, it's Dave. Oh, thanks, Henry. Hello, Dave. How are things? All right, Bill. I just finished talking with Dr. Fitzgerald in Baltimore. The appointment's set up for Saturday morning. The plane leaves 3.30 Thursday afternoon. Oh, that's great news, Dave. <laughs> uh, how's the money problem coming along? Well, not so good, Bill. What are you going to do, Dave? I don't know. But the Lord will provide. I'm taking Jimmy to the airport for that plane, even if I don't have a cent in my pocket. Not a cent. Hey, gentlemen, uh, please come to order now. Come to order. <coughs> Pastor, will you lead in prayer, please? Let us pray, man. Heavenly Father, guide our thinking tonight as we deliberate and manage the affairs of thy church. Bless these, thy servants, as decisions are made. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we'll get right to the business at hand. Yeah. I'm letting Bill have the floor because he knows the problem better than any of us. Bill, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, you all know the Bensons, Dave, Madge, and Jimmy. You're also well acquainted with Jimmy's handicap. Now, the problem is this. A week ago, while talking with Dave, I mentioned that they could quickly take the trip. Their 
Therefore, gentlemen, I propose that our church finance Jimmy's trip east so that the boy might take full advantage of this wonderful opportunity toward his recovery. I make this a formal motion. You've heard the motion? Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Bert? I'd like to ask our treasurer if we have the money for this trip. It'll cost about $250, I figure. Thad, uh, how's the treasury look? We'll come close, but it can be done. Uh, does that answer your question, Bert? In a way, yes, but it uh, means we'll scrape the bottom of the barrel to do it. Just not practical to handle the affairs of the Lord that way. It's not the way I handle my business. I disagree with you there. That boy is a living testimony to the grace of God in this community. To help him out this Christmas time would be the most practical demonstration of Christianity we could think of. And I'm sure every member of our church would back that up. I say we don't have the money. We have other obligations to meet, and soon. Well, that's right, Bert, we have. But don't you think the Lord has laid Jimmy's problem in our laps and he wants us to do something about it? You mean you laid it in our laps, Bill? How are we going to meet our missionary obligations and other worthy Christmas projects, too? Need I remind you again, Bert, we have enough money. There won't be anything left over, but there will be enough to go around. I second Bill's motion, Mr. Chairman. Well, you've heard the second. Are you ready for the question? No, we're not. We should discuss this a lot Mr. Longer. Chairman, I wish to withdraw my motion, since it won't be carried unanimously. Perhaps Bert's right. We'll trust the Lord to supply the money from other sources. What do you say, Al? Will you help Jimmy? You said it, Bill. Here's my contribution to a real hero. Bill, this is my Christmas gift to the best little fella that ever lived. Oh, thanks, Ed. Bill, I don't want Jimmy to lose that smile of his. It's sunshine. Bill, this makes the happiest Christmas of my life. Dave! Dave Benson! Bill Jefferson, how are you? Oh, fine. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Bill. All set for the plane ride, Jimmy? Yeah. Dave, have you got the money? Bill, all I've got in my pocket is $2.53. Still trusting the Lord for the money? I certainly am. <laughs> Good for you. Look, Dave, here's an envelope. It's got something in it for you from the Lord. Say it. Feels like. Madge, look. Look what's in this envelope. Oh, Dave. Dave, it's wonderful. Oh, praise the Lord. He's answered our prayers. Jimmy. Your Dr. Alex is right. You mean maybe I can... Yes, that's what I mean. Dad, the doctor says maybe I can walk again. Did you hear that? Oh, thank you so much, Doctor. Will it... Will it mean an operation? Yes, it will. There are some bones which need to be straightened out. That's the first step. But then there is much more to... Jimmy. Jimmy. Dave. Henry. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hello, fellas. Sure feels good to be back home. Dr. Fitzgerald is a fine doctor. What did he say about your legs, young fella? A stumpy. He said he could fix me up so I could walk again. Only not right away. Well, how's that, Jimmy? Why not? Yeah, what's wrong? Well, you tell him, Dad. Well, it's this way. The cost is... Well, it's too much for us to pay. But... But that's all right. When the Lord wants me to walk, he'll give Dad the money. Oh, yes, Jimmy. Sure he will. He'll give us the money. Don't you worry. <laughs> Dave, 
What's the matter? Isn't everything all right? It's all right, Bill. Jimmy's so wonderful about the whole thing. Oh, I don't understand. Bill, it, it just about tore my heart out to tell Jimmy that we didn't have the money for the operation and the treatments. And then Jimmy took my hand and told me it was all right. Said that when the Lord wanted him to walk, he'd give us the money. Dave, Jimmy's right. Well, it's certainly a rebuke to us for our lack of faith. And, and yet, what can we do? Dave... Have you got that mustard seed yet? Huh? Oh, yes, Bill. It's right here in my pocket. Better dig it out, Dave. And remember that what faith has accomplished in the past can also accomplish in the future. Pastor, this is Bill. Can we have another meeting of the deacons and trustees? Oh, fine. Thanks a lot. Gentlemen, now you have the complete story. Jimmy's recovery is in our hands. Two thousand dollars. We don't have that kind of money. And what about our other obligations? Gentlemen, I know it sounds crazy, but somewhere, somehow, God has the money. And he expects us to do our part before he steps in and does the rest. Lord expects us to use our hands. When you talk about faith, you've got to consider the circumstances. That's practical faith. Mr. Chairman, I still vote no. Friends, before we have the message of the morning, there's a young man in our congregation who'd like to say a few words to you. Jimmy Benson. Go ahead, Jimmy. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to say thank you for helping me to visit Dr. Fitzgerald in Baltimore. He gave me good news. He said I'll be able to walk again someday. Just how it will be done and when, I don't know. But the Lord knows. And he's helped me in so many ways that I can't count them anymore. But I know that someday I'll walk right up here on this platform because God helped me, because you helped me. And then I want to say, too, that if you don't know the Lord as your Savior and Helper, you ought to, because he's wonderful. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all Hey, Bill, did you see that? Bert Leeson just walked out of the church. Yes, operator, Dr. Benson Fitzgerald. Simpson Hospital, Baltimore. The call is urgent. This is Dr. Fitzgerald speaking. Yeah, Dr. Fitzgerald, my name is Bert Leeson of Naughty Pine. You don't know me, but... Yes? Can I help you? Yes, yes, you can. Only it's not me, Doctor. It's a lad named Jimmy Benson whom you recently examined. Jimmy Benson? Yes, I know him well. Uh, doctor, I want you to go ahead with the operation and the treatments. The cost is of no concern. Whatever it is, I'm amply able to take care of it. I see. You're a relative of his, I presume? A relative? Well, yes. Uh, you might call me a, an elder brother in the Lord. It, one thing more, Doctor. Yes? This gift is to remain anonymous. He must never know. Hello, Jimmy. How are you? You were a brave little fellow. Hello, Dr. Fitzgerald. I'm all right. I know you are, Jimmy. Because you're trusting the Lord, aren't you? Yeah. Because he said... Underneath are the everlasting arms. 
Thanks for telling me, Jimmy. It's something I needed to know. Did you know you had an elder brother? Me? No, I don't have any big brother. Oh? I thought you had. Now look, Jimmy, we're going to give you some... Boy, Bill, I'm so happy for Jimmy. I don't know what to do with myself. The operation's over. Jimmy's already back and naughty fine. His mom and dad can visit him every day at the hospital. Yes, and... Henry, this is a very special Christmas this year. And to think it, it won't cost Jimmy's dad a cent. No, I wonder who it could have been. Henry, you know who it was. It was the Lord. Yes, sir, it was the Lord. If my cup of joy is running over... I can imagine Jimmy's is bubbling over like a hot tea kettle. Ah, this great experience in my Christian life, one I never forget. Soon Jimmy will begin to walk. Yes, Gray Wolf. The doctor says the operation was a terrific success. Hey, Bill, who's that standing outside Jimmy's room? Hmm? Hey, that looks like... <laughs> it looks like Bert Leeson. Oh, couldn't be. Well, if it ain't, it's his double. Say, Bert... Bert Leeson. Yeah, look him run. Yeah, there he goes, like a scared jackrabbit. Now, what would bring Bert Leeson to the hospital? Hey, you don't suppose that... I don't suppose anything, pal, but one thing I know, with the Lord, all things are possible. And that's all we need to know. Yes, Bill, with the Lord, all things are possible if we have faith as big as a mustard seed. And now, boys and girls, I want to present Ranger Bill Jefferson, who wants to talk with you for just a minute. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you. Fellows and girls, I hope you enjoyed this story today about Jimmy Benson, a boy who knew the meaning of pain and handicap and trusted God through it all. Jimmy puts many of us to shame both young people and adults who are blessed with so many wonderful things and don't thank God for them. And God helped Jimmy, didn't he? And made him well again so that he could walk and run like all the other boys. But the thing that Jimmy was most thankful for was that he found the Lord Jesus to be the best friend he had in the world. Can you say that? The Lord Jesus is the very best friend I have in all the world. If you can't, here's how you may do it and mean it. Just say to him in prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. And he will, because that's why he came into the world so many years ago. I hope you'll do it and write me about it. Thank you, Ranger Bill. And may we say Merry Christmas. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill!